99 Hustles. Hustles. 99 Hustles. Hustles. 99 Hustles. 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 Welcome to the 99 Hustles podcast. I'm your host, Nick Garter. And I'm your co-host, International Fees. And today we're joined by another exceptional entrepreneur and hustler uh, by the name of Bob Sharp. Uh, Bob, I appreciate you for joining us today. Absolutely, guys. Thanks for having me on. Looking forward Absolutely. to this. It's going to be fun. Hey, we're, we're looking forward to this as well. Uh, Bob has worked his way into surpassing over 8 million views on his YouTube channel. Uh, Bob produces content, uh, helping people get out of debt and you know, help build mass, massive wealth by investing in smart personal finance strategies. Um, before we kind of get into that, I'll take us to the beginning. How did you get into content production and Uh, what the hell just happened? You know, it's corny of the beginning. I actually eat you and then you go to college. And the whole time, you know, I'm going through the, I guess you could call it the standard American way of just getting the dream, I guess, that, that is originally sold to you. And the whole time I'm thinking, wait a minute, there's something more to this. There's something I'm missing. You know, I, I got this like desire inside of me to do more and I can't figure out what that is so we're talking you know you go through high school and you know a lot of people relate to this you go through high school you go through college you get your standard corporate job and you just feel unfulfilled you're like what, what else is out there so that's where I kind of found myself stuck and you know kind of on a personal note and I, I don't share this a whole lot on YouTube but I'll I'll throw it out here for the for the podcast uh I, you know I lost my father when I was only 10 and wow. he was always an entrepreneur so I mean you know talk about somebody that really scaled up their life. And, you know, back in the early days, 60s, 70s, 80s, I mean, he did things. I mean, we had the power of the internet. We had the power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's difficult. And it's like, how do I, how do I do that? But he figured it out. And mm -hmm. so I think that inspiration, even though he passed away so many years ago, is still with me. So mm -hmm. all throughout that corporate experience, I'm like, there's got to be more to this. There's got to be more to mm -hmm. life. So I actually started off with finding like a network marketing company. And uh, that's classic. Yeah, classic <laughs> stuff. You know, that a lot of people <laughs> start off there. But, you know, now looking back, I, I don't really actually actively work that anymore. Um, I think a lot of people start off with that. And I'll call that my university experience. Even though I have yeah. a university degree, that's my second university, right? That's mm. my post post grad degree. And I think that that, yeah, yeah. you know, real like that, that's where I had to learn university. Yeah. For sure. For sure. And so I went through that. It was a struggle because you know, for me, MLM is, you know, not, it's not your standard hustle. You got to do a lot of weird things and, you know, it's just not my jam, but it helped me so much in learning internet marketing, affiliate marketing, how to do mm. a little bit on YouTube. You know what I mean? Mm. So that was my start. And that is what ultimately got me to a year ago. In fact, a year ago, three days ago was when I decided, you know what, I'm more passionate about personal finance. That's all I talk about. That's all I kind of think about. I want to transition my YouTube channel from a fitness kind of MLM type of thing to a broad helping people get out of debt, helping people, uh, you know, change their life. So kind of diving into that, you know, a couple of years ago, we were uh, pretty far in debt. We had over 95,000 of debt, you know, we, we came down. It was a typical, again, it's the typical thing. You get your job and you, first thing we wanted, we wanted to move to Florida. We wanted to get a new house. We wanted to do this and that, new cars, you know, right? And before you know it, like our overall net worth, after you subtract everything out, was uh, negative $58,000. And, you know, the first thing we did is we got to get out of debt. We got to do all these things. And the whole time I'm like, why did nobody teach us this in high school? Like how to actually do this the right way? It was all, you know, weird math equations and things like that, right? <laughs> yeah, where was, the, where was the, hey, this is actually how you can do this and, and be successful financially. So... Anyway, so we did all that, and now we're up to a $500,000 net worth, which I'm super excited nice. about, and we want to build up to that millionaire. That's kind of the, the goal, right? We, we mm -hmm. all want to become that millionaire lifestyle. So that's what I do on YouTube now. Wait, Bob, so was that in one year? You guys went from- No, no, no. Right? So, no, no. Uh, so that okay. was, first we got down to debt, and then we built up the uh, the network. Gotcha. And that was gotcha. over okay. a span of about eight years altogether. Eight years, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah that yeah, was a grind. It takes a lot of discipline. Sure. Yeah, it takes a lot of discipline. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, but I will say, you know, and we'll dive into that, you know, throughout this uh, podcast, I believe, we're going to talk about, like, YouTube in the past year was unbelievable. I mean, it, it exploded, focused on financial. And I think that so many people need help with that, that- mm -hmm. um, that's what really helped me kind of take things to the next level without a doubt. So I, I imagine you're probably finding um, similar to us 
is like COVID and like with people being home, I think they're calling it like the great resignation. It's like mm-hmm. people, you know, are looking for change in their lives. People have more time than ever. And they're, you know, they're on YouTube. They're looking for content. They're trying to better themselves. I imagine that's played into like the past year's success as well, right? Absolutely, 100%. In fact, you know, I mean, we looked at uh, the uh, 4.9 million people quit in April this past year, you know, whether that's finding a new job or doing a side hustle, right? Yeah. right. That's, that's huge. And I, I got to say that over the last year, so now specifically talking about YouTube, when I transitioned this September 22nd last year in 2020, it, uh, I've now, I now make more than I do in my corporate job. So I still, wow. you know, I still have a corporate job, but, you know, being able to do this and focus on this, if I wanted to, I could go full time with this now, but um, COVID really changed me too. You know, being home here with the family, having that flexibility and having that scalability to scale your income up. I think that's what Americans are looking for. Mm-hmm. People all over the world are looking for, like, how do I do more with my life? Mm-hmm. You know, it goes back to that calling. And just more with your time, right? I think 100%. more than anything, um, what, what COVID taught us is how valuable time is, whether that's time with your family, whether that's your time, you know, spent trying to build that wealth. Um, there has to be a more, I guess, efficient way to use your time to to spend it doing the things that really matter. So, for you, um, you kind of touched on it a, a little bit with with you know how you were able to kind of scale things up. But was there anything else that you kind of you know were able to reevaluate that helped you kind of clear space to to grow your business? Were there things that were kind of maybe standing in the way, but you know you didn't have time to really focus on it prior to COVID? Yeah, um, having more time, especially with uh, a little bit more flexibility, being able to work from home. But I think also I took a step back to say, I really want to dedicate this to, to being a business. And I think when people actually say, no, this is the goal, we're going to make this happen, no matter what happens. That is where you really kind of cross that, that bridge of just trying it out to see what happens versus I don't care, I'm going to make it happen. So it, it allowed me to really kind of focus on that. Even, even, you know, you do your videos, or let's say you do some type of you know, thing that you're working on, it doesn't work out as well as you did, or as well as you thought. Well, who cares? What's next? How do I get even better? How do I keep up in the ante? So that's what allowed me to really focus is, hey, if I post a video, it doesn't do too well. What's next? What can I do to continue to inspire people and continue to scale that up? Allowing me to focus on that and learning, that's what really kind of helped this go off the chart, so to speak. That. That makes perfect sense. Um, it seems like you're, you're, you're the type of person, Bob, is where you, you, you're, you're constantly looking for new information, constantly challenging yourself and learning new information. Um, so that is that kind of ties into like the question I had for you is you do you do videos on like nuanced aspects of financial of the financial world and financial advice. Um, do you like where, where is this coming from? Like, do, do you have like a background in finance? Or like, are you somebody who's like actively reads? You know, like I said, you seem like you're learning, you know, constantly, you know, to, to teach people about IRAs, to teach people about um, crypto or like long-term tax advantages. How, where are you getting this information from? Is, you know, is that this part of your, your, your experience as well? Yeah, it is. I, I don't have a background in finance, but it's something I'm passionate about. It's something that I've always, you know, even, even back in the day when I was in debt, I always found a way to like make a new spreadsheet to make it easier to get out of debt. And it's mm. always what I'm thinking of is, again, why didn't people teach us this a long yeah. time ago? So I'm taking that and I'm saying, okay, I ran into a roadblock. I ran into an obstacle. I'm going to get over that obstacle and then I'm going to teach people about it, you know, because I want to pay that forward. I want to pass that on based on, you know, what I went through and what I experienced. And, you know, it was actually on a previous podcast here that I listened to um, from your from your uh, channel is somebody mentioned about being an expert. You don't have to be an expert. It's about just doing better. Right. Like you continue to grow. And that's what I kind of focus on is there's so much out there that, you know, you don't have to be an expert about. You just got to go through your own challenges and then you turn those challenges into opportunities and and you start doing that with whatever your passion is. And I think that's one thing. I mean working through, uh, I guess what you consider more like a a normal corporate structure. That's one thing that I, that I learned, you know, kind of quickly um, after college was that the people that you assume are experts in things generally aren't really experts. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? So um, if they're able to kind of work their way through it and and kind of come up with solutions to problems, um, then why can't you and whatever you're dealing with? So like in your case, 
you had a real life case study of I was in debt and I got myself out of debt. Yeah, true. So yeah. You, you telling that story in a sense makes you an expert in at least your journey in terms yeah, of yeah, that's true, yeah. It, right. So I think that's what the this whole digital exploration is so is so cool to kind of be a part of and witness is seeing how people just sharing their experiences allows other people to get inspired to kind of, you know, maybe not necessarily follow the exact path, but you know, mm-hmm. at least start start the, the idea. So um, is that kind of what you're seeing in terms of feedback you're getting from your audience? Like what's, what's I guess, the typical, I guess, story you, you receive? Um, oh, without a doubt. And just recently I was talking about a Roth IRA and a lot of people don't realize that a Roth, it's totally legal. I mean, the government made a Roth IRA a thing. And the beauty of that is, is when you deposit money into that, that grows tax-free. So if that grows up to a million dollars, when you're ready to go and take money out of a Roth, you don't have to pay taxes on it when mm-hmm. it's time to take money out. And you know, I'm like, well, I think everybody knows this, but I'll, I'll throw a plug in there on a video. And a lot of people are reaching out like, oh, I didn't realize that. I've been just That's throwing crazy. it into like, yeah. Like I've been That's throwing crazy. it into a random brokerage account. I'm like, yeah, no, yeah, no, no, yeah. no, you got to start with the Roth, max the Roth out and then go into the brokerage account. Yeah, and again, it's yeah. just me learning and kind of doing it myself. And I'm like, uh-huh. Never assume that people know everything. And, and you know, your, your assumption could actually be somebody's treasure. It's like that whole thing, right? Like a yard yeah. sale, your, your junk could be somebody else's treasure, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. Right, right, different right. way, right? Like your knowledge could be somebody's treasure. Share it with the world. Yeah, that, that Roth IRA thing reminds me of that, that Peter. Uh, Peter, Peter Thiel, I was just about out. to say that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think he put like his like earnings from PayPal from like 98 into an IRA. And yeah. it's grown crazy over the past like two decades. And like he was in the, it was a headline. They're like, Peter Till pays no money on, no taxes, no tax, on like $6 yeah. billion dollars or something crazy like that. That's and it's like, yo, that's the game, man. That, that, those are the rules to the game. That's how an, a Roth IRA works, you know? Yeah. And he's not cheating the system. He's not, he's exactly. not doing tax loopholes. It's, it's a funded account. Like it's, it's sponsored by the government, so to speak, you know? It's, exactly. it's a huge thing. Yeah. Now, uh, now, Bob, you're also you also um, are, you know, a, a coach as well. You're, it seems like you're, you're transitioning to being a life coach as well um, for your audience. Uh, could you talk a little bit of, about that and making that decision to, to, to transition into coaching? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it, it, it comes down to inspiring people again. I think it's just so cool because it's seeing people also take their lives to the next level. I mean, I'm all about living your sweet life, right? Like whatever that desired sweet life is, if you think about like, okay, someday I want to wake up. And I want my life to look like this. That's your yeah. sweet life, right? Yeah. And it's different from everybody, right? It depends on what you want in your life. So find, helping people find that, find that uh, excitement for them is it kind of gets me excited in the same time. Uh, in fact, I'll, I'll share a story. I was just working with somebody. I got a note here because I had to write it down because it was so good. They are doing some Instagram posts and they're trying to like scale that up. And they're like, yeah, but you know, I'm just starting off and I'm having a hard time with it. And this person over here is doing this and they do really good with the photos. And then this person over here has a big following. I said, stop. What I just saw on your Instagram, I don't know anything about your niche and I'm excited about what you're sharing. You got me kind of hooked to want to buy what you're doing, right? Because they're doing like some type of cool thing that they can uh, convert their own product. I'm like, you got me hooked. You're going to know your competition better than your demographic is going to know your competition. And, you know, I said that I'm like, you know what, I got to think of that for myself, too, because, yeah. <laughs> you know, and that's the cool thing about yeah. coaching. You kind of learn yourself as you start we, talking yeah. to them. I'm like, yeah, I got to look in the mirror sometimes on this. Mm-hmm. Right. But I'm like, you know, that's the key. And they're like, oh, you're absolutely right. I'm like, yeah, you're you're finding new people. They're finding you. That demographic is excited about you. Who cares about your competition? Granted, they might find them, but they're they found you first. They're going to be appreciative mm-hmm. of your product and, and what you're sharing. Plus so everyone kind of what is, I love about the life coach stuff, you know? Uh, and with that, um, I'm glad you mentioned that because it's a good reminder, even for us in terms of just like, you know, reminding ourselves that there's enough for everyone out there. You know, yeah. Like yeah. You, it, it, we oftentimes kind of get stuck in this, like, Oh man, I wish we did this a year earlier or well, I wish we did this six months ago. And it's like, when you look at the actual numbers, like the amount of, you know, for our, in our case, the amount of podcasts that are actually still active after their first year is like, you know, slim to none. So the fact that like, you know, we're just reminding yourself to, to, to run your own race and, and to kind of keep, you know, that, that, you know, in the back of your head that the only competition really is just, are you going to wake up every day and, and yeah. get to work? <laughs> yeah, that competition is your consistency. And as long as you stay consistent, that's the key. I mean, I got competitors, so to speak, on YouTube that have millions of subscribers, you know, mm-hmm. I'm sure a lot of people that know my niche probably know who I'm talking about. And, and they're phenomenal YouTubers. 
Um, but there's going to be people looking for me and my personality, just like there's going to be people looking for somebody that just started today. Maybe they just yeah. started their YouTube channel today. Hey, somebody's looking for you and they're going to fall in love with your personality and the way you describe things. They may not like me. They're going to love you. Stay yeah. consistent. And then you're going to find yeah. more people in the, in the sea that are going to find you. That's what's key. And the, the experience and your, your experience, he said that earlier is like, they're going to, they're going to gravitate towards your personality and your life experience. That's something Every person, every hustler, entrepreneur out there, there's only one you. You only yep. have one life. There's nobody like you. And when you find out how to make that one, your individuality value to other people, you know, you'll, you'll crush it. So that, that's a very, very, very important point you made just there, Bob. Um, so uh, we, we did want to ask you, you, you have a lot of experience with, with talking directly with aspiring entrepreneurs, um, as well as people seeking financial advice. What do you see as like a common theme or common topics that it seems like people need the most help with uh, as of right now? It, it's surprising how much it's investing, 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 you know, um, and it's also you got to think about debt, but I think people right now are really focused on investing. And there's a, there's a twofold uh, thing with that, so to speak, you know, one being that you could start investing, but you're investing because you only heard about it because it's on a hype. You know, for example, the GameStop craze, the AMC and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And right. I know a few people that said, oh, I heard about it. So I just said, you know, I decided to go all in and put oh, money man. down on GameStop. And of course, they, they buy it on the high. It crashes. And then they think investing is a big scam. <laughs> like, I'm never going to spend, right? And I'm like, no, oh, that's like, you know, and that burns me up. So, yeah, yeah. but that's kind of what people are, are really focused on right now. So I'm trying to say, look, before you do that, follow this plan, you know, follow this model, get yourself out of debt. It's going to pay off. It, you, it's a guaranteed investment return. If you've got a 14% interest rate on debt and you pay off that debt, you're giving yourself a 14% return on the money that you would have had to pay the bank to own that debt. That's what I'm saying. Start there first, pay off the debt, and then you can go crazy with investing. Um, I was, I was just going to start with the investments. It's like, hey, there's a step before that, you know? I, well, you kind of just answer my question because I, I was just going to ask, you know, whenever someone comes to you and is like, hey, like I have, let's say, for instance, I have 20 grand in debt. I have, let's say, $10,000 cash that I can either invest with or pay off partial of that debt. And I'm, I'm assuming most people are like, well, can I invest that 10 and flip it to 20 and then pay off the debt? Like, is that a common common theme you kind of see? Big time. A, a huge question that's asked. Now, the one thing I always ask is what's that interest rate that you're paying? So if you're yeah. going to come back and say, oh, I got a 1.5% interest rate. Hey, you know, it might, you got to make sure you're kind of somewhat conservative on what you're going to put it into just to make sure that you maintain like, uh, you know, what you need so you can pay it off if you need to. But if you come back and you say, oh, it's 8%, 10%, 20%, whoa, that's a lot of interest on that debt. And with where we are in the uh, investment world right now and how the stock market's going, I'd recommend you start focusing on that debt, put that 10K toward the debt. So it all kind of goes back to that interest rate and what, where's your money going to work best for you, you know? That, it, it, it's strategic. So, you, you know, you, you know you, yeah, it's discipline and it's thoughtful. It's not just reckless, yep. you know. You know, Gambling. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you have to have a strategy for for debt management and, and debt repayment. Um, that makes uh, that make, makes total sense. Well, you know, it um, comes back to people that also say that, you know, we talk about the risk tolerance, too. Some people can't handle that. They're like, you know what? It is only a one percent interest rate. But I, you know what? The more I think about it, if I get laid off tomorrow or my income mm -hmm. source drops, I'm going to lose my mind. I'm going to freak out. Well, then you got to pay that debt off because that's what's keeping you scared. And that that comes down to the mortgage payments when people have house payments and they're like, should I just put all that money toward the mortgage, even though it's a low rate right now? Well, if you can't stomach the pain of what's going to happen, yeah. if you, you always got to, you know, not that you always got to think negative, but you got to think strategy, as you mentioned earlier. Right. So if you're going to feel bad about that, hey, get rid of the risk. And then guess what? Your mortgage payment every month that you had slam that into the investments. You now have that yeah. powerful money that you can do what you want with it. And that makes sense. So, well, Bob, let me ask you this. What do you think about the difference between, um, uh, we, we had another entrepreneur, I forget who it was on the podcast, and he was talking to us about the power of like buying things with credit versus like cash. Yep. What, 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 what are your thoughts on that? I am a huge fan of buying on credit if you do it the, the right way. Now, how I 
kind of talk about it with my audience and with the people I coach. It's actually using it as cash. So it's taking advantage of cashback rewards, travel rewards, and things like that. Um, for example, I have a, an American Express that I love. And this card for us, I got a family of four. We spend a ton of money on groceries every week. So, you know, for us, we want as much as we can get back. So that offers a 6% cash back. Now, oh, wow. keep in mind, yeah, keep in mind, you're going to pay that money anyway. You got to buy groceries every week, no matter what. I'm not going out and buying something I, I don't necessarily need. I got to buy groceries. So why not get 6% cash back? And then what we do is every time we swipe that credit card, I actually go into, now I'm a little bit of a nerd and I got my spreadsheets, right? <laughs> so I go into my Excel spreadsheet and I say, okay, Amex on this date, we paid this much money. And at the end of every month, I'll look through all of the, you know, I'll basically look at my Amex statement, compare that to my transaction register, make sure it lines up, pay it off in full. Because remember that cash I already kind of paid on my transaction register with money I had in my bank account. And then the benefit of that is I rack up cash back, uh, rewards and between our cards right now in fact just that one alone because we've been going nuts with that with uh, some bonus offers we're up to 500 bucks in the last six months in cash back and we're saving it up because we want to cash that out for christmas and use it as christmas gifts it's like hey that's that's a pretty good, nice christmas one win yeah so yeah. so i mean i think your skill set is is perfect in this kind of field in terms of just making sure everything adds up but for like the average person who's not going to have an Excel sheet, you know, to, to kind of like line itemize everything. What do you suggest? Are there, are there like certain um, apps or programs that you kind of like suggest people to start with to kind of get them used to, you know, um, keeping tabs of like what they're spending and, and, you know, the best way to pay off? Yeah, there's a few of them balances. out there. Yeah, there's a few of them out there. Uh, I think Mint you know, even Dave Ramsey, who a lot of people know of, he has a, uh, a budget tool as well. Now, of course, yeah. he's anti-credit card, so you got to be careful with that one. Um, wait, but <laughs> wait, what's the argument? Wait, Dave Ramsey is? Oh, yeah, Dave he's, Ramsey. He's cut up those credit cards. Cut them up. What, they're not, what's, they're not, what's his logic? He likes, he likes cash, debit. He loves cash because his point is, if you play with credit cards, it's like playing with snakes. You're going to get bit. Because the credit card companies are smarter than you. They have better marketing than you. They're going to figure out a way to get you screwed up into paying interest. But my argument to that is, and again, it goes back to like, you need an app. You need something if you're going to play this. Because yeah, yeah. my argument to Dave Ramsey is, well, wait a minute. If, if I'm treating this like cash and I'm like spot on the money, if I lose all my income source tomorrow, I'm, I'm dead. I'm screwed. I still have the money to pay that credit card off because of how I've been tracking it every single this day. Is, this I swipe way. that card, you know what I mean? I'm not just hoping I got the money at the end of the month. I'm, I'm legitimately tracking it. Um, and I'm actually looking at like, is there a way that we can make, because I don't think there's a good app that kind of speaks to what I said. So it's kind of an mm. opportunity, I think too, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> build up an app here that- uh, Excuse that, me, uh, disclaimer, that's know? been trademarked already. So like, don't there you go. <laughs> <laughs> we had a trademark before we released the episode. <laughs> um, uh, Bob, so I we want to talk a little bit about then, um, you know, your transit, learning YouTube, right? You you have a lot of followers and a lot of views on YouTube. Um, just starting out, can you talk a little bit about, you know, learning that whole process of like, recording videos, understanding that you're going to need to, you know, get into affiliate marketing, potential sponsorships. Could you, could you talk a little bit about that process? Also Absolutely. About yeah. I started with an iPhone. So I had my iPhone, I had it backwards yeah. and I literally propped it up against like a TV in my bedroom. <laughs> and that's Amazing. how I started my, my videos. You know, you got to start somewhere and that's where I started. Yeah. Um, a lot of people say that, right. You start with the basic yeah. equipment and my point is you, you get better every video and you figure out how can I get better with this video? Uh, you know, so for me, it was a lot of just test and adjust and watching other YouTube videos as well to learn from them. So that's free. If you're just starting off, you don't have an income to say, I can reinvest money into the business, start for free, watch other people in your niche, learn from them and figure out, okay, how can I spin this in my own personality and in my own, you know, passion? So that's what I was doing. A lot of just watching, learning. And now what I do is I scale up. I do a lot of uh, training as, as much as I can. I try to look at some advanced training and trying to learn things like, you know, my editing software and how I can, uh, you know, get better quality from my viewers based on what they're looking at. 
And don't forget, YouTube gives you statistics. And I think a lot of people don't take advantage of their statistics and looking at that and saying, hey, wait a minute, people seem to be clicking off the video at this point. What did I say that upset them? Mm. Or what did they say that didn't click with them? How can I improve that for next video? And then you, every time I always say to myself, how do I get 1% better on this next video? What can I do? Mm. You know, and that, that's, the, that's the key. In fact, I'm actually editing a video right before the podcast here. I was editing a video and I'm like, okay, I got I to gotta try this. A little bit of a newer thing that I haven't done on the videos before, but I want to see if that helps with, you know, catching my audience's attention for longer throughout that video. Keep that's that key. attention. Yep. Yep. Yeah, we, 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 call, we call it reps. It's like each, yeah. each like time we record anything, we just focus on that one rep. Like if you're in the gym, make sure that rep yes. is as, as good as possible. We try to get as mm-hmm. many reps in as possible. I think we, we stole that actually. Who we still have from we did. That's from, that's from uh, uh, Alan. That's from Alan. Alan. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, it's a uh, rep. <laughs> No, it's, and, and, and with that, and, you know, in terms of just, you know, starting with the iPhone and then kind of building up your audience that way, was there like a specific video that kind of went viral and kind of took it to the top or was it like a, a, a I guess, a steady growth to get you to, to where you're at? Because I mean, 8 million views on the channels is not something that just happens to, to most people. It's a, it's a very select few amount of, of you know, content producers. Yeah, it, it really was uh, the one that now some of this and, and it's I've been told this is rare to pivot your channel. But remember, I focused on fitness originally yeah, and then I uh, pivoted right. over to um, to finance. So a lot of people say that's hard to do. But I'll tell you one thing. I was reviewing some finance apps and some investing apps. And that one that was done, I think it was October last year, really started taking off. And that really started the, the trend. A lot more people were finding me for my finance content. And then one video leads to the next, leads to the next. So I started thinking, okay, if they like that kind of content, let me tailor some content around that particular topic, right? Investing apps, and then see if I can also start talking about some of the other things that I think will help people they may not know about, such as what we talked about here, debt freedom and things like that. Mm. Um, And you you mentioned it earlier, I think in particular with YouTube and, you know, with, with podcasting as well, any type of content creation, you mentioned earlier about consistency. And how important you said all you you know creators have to just be consistent. Can you talk for YouTube in particular and constantly giving your audience you know regular videos? Can you talk a little bit about you know how you've managed to stay consistent? Were there any you know challenges or any lapses to where you might have gotten hard on yourself or you know can, can you talk about how you you know been able to you know maintain such consistency? Yeah, absolutely. And you know it's. <laughs> you're going to be hard on yourself and any entrepreneur needs to realize that you need to, that needs to be the first thing you think about. You're going to have those times that you're going to be like, yo, I should just quit this. It, it's, uh, it's not worth it. You're probably, you should think of that all the time. And, and actually sometimes I think that's like a secret to being a successful entre- entrepreneur is having those moments, but still sticking with it. That's the key. So YouTube has a ranking system. Every time you post a video, it'll give you like a, a ranking after a certain amount of time. Is it a one out of 10 out of the last 10 videos you published? Is it a two, three, four, five, six, whatever? And I'll tell you, a lot of YouTubers start getting kind of depressed if their video is nine or 10 out of 10. The last yeah. thing you want is your new video to be like the worst video out of the last 10 you just did. Yeah. It's going to happen, right? Mm-hmm. It's going to happen. And, and remember, that's something you created. Still be proud of it. Just because it's not one out of 10 doesn't mean that it's a bad video, uh, especially if you were just talking about a trending topic. And that, that's a trap that I think a lot of people fall into. They'll do a trending topic that gets a lot of views right away. Maybe it even goes viral right away. Now, of course, guarantee your next videos are going to be below that for a little while, mm-hmm. you know, until that drops off. So for me, that's, that's a huge thing that I continuously struggle with. In fact, my last video, I think we ranked about a nine out of 10. But I'm starting to get to a point now I know where it's going to kind of land. I'm like, okay, this one is this kind of topic. It's probably going to land around the lower end of the spectrum here, but I'm cool with that. Someday it will inspire more people, right? As people discover this video and, uh, and maybe the next one will, will rank a little bit higher, but I'm going to show up anyway and do it. I made a commitment back in September and it goes back to what we talked about earlier with COVID. I love this idea of having flexibility with the family. I can walk my daughters into school now every morning um, because yeah. of my corporate job being a little more flexible. It's nice now, but in the future, when I can do this full time, it's going to be nonstop. Awesome. Yeah. Bob, I do- I would- Freedom. Yeah, we were actually going to ask you about that. How was it, you know, learning, you know, you, you talked about, you know, learning all these different videos and softwares, YouTube, imagine SEO. How was that like also, you know, with the family of four? 
Oh man, it's, it's a challenge. And, you know, I, I got to give a lot of respect to my family. Um, I got two daughters, I got, you know, my wife and they are so super supportive because they know what we're in it for and mm -hmm. they know the dream, they know the goal. So we sat down, we said, this is the vision. This is the goal. And it's, it means I'm going to be like hustling a lot, right? I'm going to be grinding away at this because we know what the outset of that is, you know, especially in the beginning, because I got a lot to learn. I don't know what I'm really doing. I got to figure this mm -hmm. out. And so, you know, a lot of late nights, a lot of just, you know, kind of scheduling and, and, you know, at this time we'll do this, but then the bigger part of the day I'm all in. And because I have a corporate job, a lot of my work happens over the weekends. That's just how it is, you know, um, but it, it's a good payoff. So to kind of follow up on that and the, and the family aspect of things, you mentioned earlier um, that, you know, you had a typical American story in terms of going the corporate route, getting a job, and just not feeling fulfilled, um, you know, a year into this kind of explosion in, in, in terms of just, you know, the amount of, of views and people that are kind of, you know, tuned into your content, would you say you're now at that stage where you are fulfilled or do you feel like you're further along in that journey? A hundred percent. 100%. Yeah, I, I feel so excited to wake up and, and get excited about everything that is going on, you know, and that's what's super exciting. And just to think, you know, like where I'm at now, what's next year going to bring? And that's the exciting new part with this consistency. Yeah. Sitting down here on September 27th next year, what does that look like? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You'll, you'll, you'll be actually, it's funny you ask, you'll be doing your one year recap of, uh, of, the, of the episode. And I love yeah. that. Yeah. I love that. I love that. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, we we'll can look do. back and see that, you know, and it's, it's yeah, we'll, showing up every day. We'll have our investment app out by then. That, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, that. <laughs> Bob, Bob Sharp, 99 Hustle Collab. Yeah, yeah, I love yeah. it. I love it. Um, Bob, as a YouTuber, you know, so one question a lot of people do typically have uh, for YouTubers is when trying to monetize your channel, are you looking for like to get paid by YouTube via ads? Or are you looking more for like sponsorships and like, you know, brand shout outs and, and partnerships? For me, it's a little bit of both. Um, okay. In fact, I, I don't mind sharing some numbers too. I have it up here so I can look at it. So the first thing, you know, obviously you have the sponsorships, which are cool in two different ways, especially if they offer affiliate commissions as well. So you get sponsored for doing a video review or even just mentioning um, their product. Now I am very picky. I like to make sure that I like the product and that I use it for a little period of time, which, you know, for anybody to strike a deal, we're going to go through this long process of me trying their product out before I actually review it. Um, but I think that's key because I don't want my audience to look at this and be like, oh, he's just trying to make money, right? Um, while sure, sure money is kind of a nice thing to have, and that's kind of part of my goal, I, I want to make sure that it's <laughs> valuable for the, for the people I'm sharing it with, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but then, so I get the sponsorship, but then also having that affiliate on the back end as people get that product or it's a valuable product for them, getting a kickback, that's always nice. Um, so I would say it's, it's a nice mix, but um, in full transparency, a lot of the AdSense that's going on right now is, is kind of a bulk right now of the income, which I know a lot of people say you got to be careful of that. And, and I'm certainly careful of that, but you know, I, I guess that, that makes it kind of a fun challenge. How do I scale up my affiliate? Wait, wait, why, why would you be careful with and, well, and, ad, and, people, and AdSense or, or YouTube, that's you getting paid from YouTube, right? Yeah, that's YouTube ads. Yep. Yeah, a lot of people say, and, and I don't know, it, a lot of people say when you do YouTube ads only, you're, you're, you know, that could be risky because YouTube could always change rates at any moment. They could drop it. And I get all that. But there's a risk. My, my argument sometimes to that is also you could get laid off from a job at any moment. Yeah. <laughs> when, you, when you don't own the platform or the company, you're always at risk. For sure. Yeah. For sure. hundred percent. And so you just need to understand that risk. Um, but it is funny when people say that they'll also share like their revenue and it's always like a bulk of it is always that AdSense. So I'm like, hey, why are you telling me that when you got like most of your money coming from that? So, you know. um, but yeah, in, in the last couple of months, I've been able to scale up um, looking back here at my last uh, anywhere from 17 to 20,000 a month, just off of not, not just ads. I'm talking that's the affiliates and everything combined. Um, but that that's huge. I mean, that, that's awesome. And, and what we do right now is I'm taking that and we're actually paying off the mortgage with it because I want to pay off my mortgage early. Did you monetize, was your fitness, when you were a fitness channel, were you monetized that then? And, you know, I'm sure this is like the reason you're stuck with this because this is way crazier, obviously, than your fitness, you know, channel, but were you monetized also back then? 
I was, yeah. So I actually started the fitness so long ago. And that's why I call it my university because it was like six years. So I started in YouTube in 2011. And back then you didn't have to have all the requirements to monetize. So I was able to monetize like my first day on the platform. So wow. it was 2011 and I monetized. Now you made like half of a penny. You didn't make much money every day. But um, as I, I grew a little bit, I made some money. I mean, like maybe $200 a month on, that, on you know the fitness. But when I, there was two issues with that. One, I was not consistent. So one month I might just do one video. The next month I might do eight videos. And then the next month I might be absent for the whole month. So that inconsistency was just like, nobody knew when to expect me and what I was talking about. And I was always talking about the network marketing company. I was never talking about, you know, things that really were truly valuable to people. And I think that's also another piece of it. You got to think about how do I provide value to my audience that'll actually help them, not just always pushing products, right? Yeah. Um, and, and that that pivot last year is is what really brought us to you know what we're talking about today. And and with that, were you were you someone that tried like signing up with some of these like larger advertiser networks where they're like, hey, sign up your podcast or your or your YouTube channel, and you know we can help connect you with you know so and so. Is that kind of how it started for you in that way as well? Or did you go a little bit more direct? No, I went direct. I've been solo. Now I've gotten um, requests for like certain MCMs and, and different uh, people that can support you, but I've always kind of done it my own. Yeah. Ownership is freedom and ownership yeah. is control. And especially right. when you're doing something creative like content creation. Um, one thing, uh, another another question we, we, we do have for you, um, is we, we got into like the finance topics a little bit. Now, obviously what's hot right now with everybody, we get tons of questions about everybody only wants to talk about is crypto. Yep. Um, so, you know, you being a financial expert um, and a financial influencer, could you talk to us a little bit about your thoughts on crypto? Um, do you recommend people get into it? Cause it's crazy volatile. I mean, it just, you know, China just, what did China just like oh, yeah. banned it, you know, a couple Bandit days ago. Yeah. Again. Yeah. Yeah, like the second I time. This is the second time this week, I think. Actually, they, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this morning. Yeah, yeah. it's crazy. <clears throat> yeah, and and so one thing that y yes, I'm invested in crypto, but I would just say that you got to be okay with that wild ride that you just mentioned, right? You're up and down on a roller coaster, and you got to be ready to hang on for the ride. And so don't put money in that you're gonna like cry if you lose it, but obviously the key would be you put money in and it's going to grow. But if it does go away, you got to be okay with that and make sure you have like a, a kind of a better strategy on the back end. That's why I was talking about like the Roth IRA and stuff. Knock that stuff out first, get that out of the way, scale up your income or cut down some of your expenses and then play around with uh, some Bitcoin or Cardano or, you know, even if you want to go into the Dogecoins and Shiba Inus and things like that, go for it. But just know that, okay, when I do this, especially if it's one of those really new high volatile ones, like the Dogecoins, I just got to be okay with losing the money. You know, I think Bitcoin's much more established. So that would be probably yeah. if you want to go a little bit more like, you know, conservative, like I guess, investment. that would be the way to go. But if you're looking at it as more of like a savings or an investment account, for sure. Like that, do do your research and um, find like the right projects that kind of make sense because it's a good point. I mean, it's, it is a, a topic that we get a lot of questions on. Um, and it's oftentimes questions about a, a lot of these volatile coins or tokens that people don't know a lot about. And it's like, yeah, you can do it. You know, you can also go to the casino. Yeah. So, <laughs> you, exactly. play yeah. <laughs> you can yeah. also play blackjack. So, pick yep. your poison. Absolutely. And I think it's also important to research if you're serious about crypto, like a lot of things such as are people adopting Bitcoin as a payment method? I think mm -hmm. that kind of stuff in the future is going to help that currency, because then it also it's just like trading foreign currency at that point, because now you have a vehicle that people are using as a payment. You're invested in it. It's going to help it grow. You know, um, also the scarcity. There's some coins that don't have any type of scarcity to them. Bitcoin does. I think it's 32 million, if I remember correctly. Once all mm -hmm. 32 million are mined. That's it. That's the circulating supply of Bitcoin. So that's kind of cool. It's like collectibles, right? Like yeah. I have something rare that everybody wants. That's kind of a, a nice thing to look at. It's but do your research yeah. and look at that stuff, right? Like this is just, I mean, where we relate because we're, we're, we're kind of in this space of like discussing finance and entrepreneurship. It's just like the craziest time ever to do this. Yep. It's the craziest time ever to do this. I mean, you talked about it earlier with you have these Robin Hood stocks like GameStop, AMC, you have like what's going on with crypto and then obviously like COVID. Like it's just, 
it's just such the craziest time to, to, to be in this space. Like there's just so much going, NFTs are another yeah. thing that are like, it's like this space is changing like almost every month. Um, Absolutely. Do you try to like, how do you try to stay on top of like what's new? Like, are you, you know, I guess that comes into still educating yourself, right? Or like, would you do a video on NFTs? Like, I, I, you'd have to like study them for like 48 hours. For or sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I haven't done, cause I, I need to do a lot more research. I, I get the concept. I, I know all about it from that perspective, yeah, yeah. but not, I don't know all about it. Cause I'm not yeah, invested yeah, yeah. in NFTs right now. So it's obviously crazy, I don't yeah. want to throw something out there. that doesn't make sense for people that I don't really use, but, mm -hmm. um, but you know, Bitcoin, I'm always watching that. I'm always watching the crypto market because I think that is key, you know, and anybody that invests, you should keep your eye on stuff. If you're going to go even direct into like a stock like Apple, you should keep an eye on Apple to make sure they don't do something dumb that doesn't align with what you want, because that could take the stock in a weird way. But I think a lot of times, too, that don't always just jump in on the hype. So one thing that I realized is that people, when they stop talking about Bitcoin, you know how sometimes it's like everybody talks about it and they quiet down for a little bit and then everybody talks about it. Like when people are quiet, go all in. That's where you go nuts. <laughs> You know, because then when people are talking about it, guess what? You rode that wave all the way up and that's what you want. Um, you know, I'm, I'm kicking myself. 2017, I bought during that high. <laughs> that high was like 17,000. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I was stupid and sold then. Um, luckily, I, I sold not for a loss. I, I had a profit. But imagine if I hung, like if I just held on, held like on. now yeah. 56, 50, 45,000, whatever that is, depending on the day, it doesn't matter. It's way up from that 10,000. But all that period of time, especially after 2017, it dipped down to like 8,000. That's yeah. the time where nobody's talking about it to get in on that coin, get in yeah, on that crypto. Yeah, yeah. And, that's, and that's why it's important to kind of, like you mentioned, uh, to do your research and whatever you're yeah. going to invest in, you got to believe in it, you know, or, For sure. or have some sort of game plan if you, if you don't. So, yep. yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, Bob, uh, one question we always ask uh, the guests that we have on to the podcast is what is your hustle mantra? Um, now your hustle mantra can kind of be like a quote or a phrase or something that you like either live your life or run your business based on um, what if so if you had to choose like a hustle mantra, uh, what would that be. Uh, and you know what we kind of talked about it throughout this video but uh, this this will sum it up awesome. What am I doing today to be 1% better than I was yesterday. Mm. That's always and, and that's the thing it's like eating an elephant right you eat it one bite at a time. And that's how it wraps up with consistency. It wraps up with you want to be the best entrepreneur. You don't need to go all in and be like the best thing out there and expect 1 million subscribers or $10 million <laughs> in revenue. Yeah, yeah, how yeah. do I just get 1% better? And that, those little tiny things day by day, a lot of people will look at you and be like, hey, how'd you become an overnight success? Not realizing that it took you 365 days to get there. Right? Yeah. It's a lot so of that would, that's for sure my mantra. I always look like, what can I do today to get 1% better? Man, Get that one more rep in, as we were talking. Yeah, one more. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I must say, I really enjoyed this rep. This was uh, one of the one of the better workouts um, that we've had in, in, in quite a while. And, and you know, Bob, I, you know, I know I personally learned a lot from this from this episode, and I'm sure um, our audience will do the same. Um, but before we wrap up, uh, where can people find you? Um, I know we talked about your YouTube channel a lot, but um, you know, what, where, like, what are your socials where people can, can find you for more content? Yeah. So I, I'm on obviously YouTube, Bob Sharp, uh, E at the end of Sharp. Um, a lot of people just type Sharp without the E, but also at Sweet Life Coach on Instagram and at Sweet Life Money on Twitter and TikTok. So that's where I'm hanging out. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Bob, it was, it was a pleasure speaking with you today. Um, real quick, uh, this is, this is a wrap for this week's episode. Uh, thanks for listening to the 99 Hustle podcast. Uh, be sure to visit 99hustles.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our amazing bonus content. Please rate, review, and subscribe if you enjoyed this episode. Always remember, there are 99 hustles. All you got to do is choose one. 99 hustles.